Welcome to Trends. Hope you're having a blessed Good Friday. Connect with us on X at Trends on SABC. Now tonight we start with this. Classic and vintage cars always turn heads. From appearance, design to even the sound, they undoubtedly leave us in awe. It's no wonder the James Hall of Transport recently hosted what is termed their most dynamic museum festival. Besides food and music entertainment, the showcasing of classic and vintage car models took center stage. Trends producer Didi Ntlemokoleti caught up with some of these awesome vehicles. Let's see what was in store. Turning heads as they drive in, thrilling motor vehicle enthusiasts. And what better place to showcase the evolution of stylish, timeless vehicles than at the James Hall Museum in Rosettenville, Johannesburg. The Creative Native Vintage and Classic Motor Show promises to be a compelling showcase of vintage and classic cars brought here by all the various car clubs in uh, all over Gauteng. So we have invited car clubs to bring their own collection of cars in addition to the uh, museum collection itself. So visitors um, will expect to enjoy, you know, a variety, a wide range of these classic beauties. Their children's activities, museum tours, uh, bus rides on our 1952 London bus. So there's lots in store for everyone. It's mostly about the core function of museums. The James Hall Museum of Transport serves to preserve and conserve heritage so that the, um, the present generation can have important information and knowledge, you know, to share with future generations. Exploring these car models proved an absolute pleasure as collectors brought their best foot forward. That's a Chevrolet uh, 210, um, two-door post, um, 1955 model. What else do you want to know? Yeah, we build the cars. Um, we, we're busy with a couple as well, uh, other ones as well. This was now finished recently. We've still got a couple of touch-ups to do, uh, but it's basically its debut. What are the new elements in it that make it so amazing? Well, I made it very drivable. So it's got a modern motor, turn the key, it starts, um, automatic. It's got big brakes because of course the old cars got all drum brakes and things like that so they don't stop um, so when you when you upgrade motor you've got to upgrade brakes you've got to upgrade suspension so do you take old models and then boost them and beef them up or how does it work this was a nut and bolt restoration so this was a rust bucket um, it was it was in very bad shape Nanette your family is a lover of vintage and classic cars what is the experience for you of being in such an amazing custom-made car. It is awesome because um, it's such a big car. Everyone looks at you when you're driving the vehicle. It's got aircon, the look, the lines, the sound, just the feel. This is a JBA kit car and it just goes continuously. It's got a Ford Cortina engine in 1600 Kent. Um, the kit is called JBA, that's the initials of the guys that made it in the UK. Underneath is the slave car, which is a 1978 Ford Cortina bucket. And it drives continuously. The model that it's built on is 1978. So everything underneath is, comes from the 1978 Ford Cortina. And then the kit goes on top make unique there's probably eight in the country and if you thought cars were toys for boys only well think again so guys do you know the difference between muscle and classic cars well muscle they changed the engine they gave it more power it's faster it's better um, the engine's more beefier it's been rebuilt and changed and everything classic car is just it still goes 80 miles an hour <laughs> doesn't go too fast, but it's all fully original, nothing changed. What makes you tick about these cars? Well, I'm more a girl that likes muscle cars, so I would like, I like the sound of it, and for example, the big buckies, it kind of just gets me excited. It's 
been in my blood, I guess, since I was young. My dad used to do it, and now I just, I think it just came over to me. Well, I've been racing cars since I'm 15. Um, you know, I've been in the industry just over 30 years and uh, doing auction eventing around the world for the last 14 years. We have also some muscle with uh, upgraded engines, the G-Wagon, very special, because it's got a, it's a two, two door, it's a short wheel base, very rare to find. It's an 86 vintage, but all new technology engine, and new technology brakes, a new technology, six speed box, and a fuel injection thing, engine in there. So you can drive it like a daily car, but it's still classic. Those who had the luxury to see, touch, and even get a ride in these classics had this to say. My experience so far, it's been out of this world. The mere fact that these, we didn't know that the modes of transport back in the day operated the way they do, the way they did, is just mind-blowing, I'm not going to lie. I love old cars. Um, I love just looking at all the different, um, the ways in which it has moved on from the old to the new. Um, and it's been interesting seeing the different cars that we've noticed over here and the people that we've experienced. Just getting to see a variety of different cars and the biggest one of all is getting to see a big smile on his face, you know, he enjoys seeing um, new cars all the time. The car that I enjoyed was the Lotus because it was, it's very fast and rare. And I also saw the, the, very, the olden day Fords. Riding in vintage and classic vehicles, now that's a lavish way to spend a fulfilling day. Adventurers and lovers of all things nature, this one is for you. If you want to come face to face with reptiles and let your hair down, then the Chameleon Village in Hartebeers in the North, 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 Northwest Province rather, is your destination. This tourism attraction site provides edutainment tours and thrilling experiences for daring adrenaline junkies. If you think the name Chameleon Village means we only get to experience reptiles and amphibians, well, think again. This place is a whole mood, one of the perfect spots to spend quality time with friends and family, or if you just want some alone time. Here, you get to experience the rich cultural heritage of Africa. Let's find out more about this place. Chameleon Village opened its doors about 21 years ago focused on the tourism industry but during COVID we had to adjust and like the chameleon change our image and our target base and as clientele so we moved to younger families and the local customer as a weekend outing as a family destination so we host one of the largest African markets still with the tourist industry we have a 18 hole mini golf course, a bungee bounce, a pool and spray park area, snake reptile conservation park, lion and tiger park and adventure freaks. They host go-karting, paintball, archery, axe throwing and a hell of a lot of activities. And we are unfortunately mostly a sunny attraction because most of the activities are outdoor. So uh, weather does play a, a role but we adapt and we work around it as far as possible. We host three fantastic restaurants, which is Madagascar Island Cafe, which is more your burgers and finger foods. Then we have Poolside Cafe, that's your pizzas, your basket foods. And then we host Pemba Mozambican Restaurant, which you guys will be visiting later. Uh, that's seafood classics and the real Portuguese style of food making. And I was this 18-hole pot pad is for all ages. I think everyone planning to start playing golf must try this one first. It creates the interest on another level. But if you find it to be a slow sport and want to experience an adrenaline rush, there are activities for you to hear. The latest stuff we've got is um, axe throwing. So this is taking, it's a brand new activity and it's spreading like a wildfire across South Africa. Our track is built, it. we can have competitions. We, during the month, we collect people that played, we look at the higher score, and then once a month, the first Sunday of every month, the guys get together for a serious competition to see who's the winner of the month. It seems like very, very simple, but once you, you, you expect, it feels like you're on top of the world. It's a crazy feeling. Are you gonna show me how to do it now? I will, I will show you. <laughs> All right, so here we are. There's your axle for exits on that side. Uh -huh. This is mine on this side. 
and like a set just. How many do I take? All of them. Five, five of them. They should be five for you. They are five. Uh, normal competition, they only throw one at a time. Okay. But we, we just play with five just to get some more experience on it. Uh -huh. And that's how simple it is. Everybody's going to have their own technique. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, the aim is just to get it there. I think I'm going to do better next time. Okay. Let's be <laughs> Okay. All right, so there we go. Now we're gonna go together. I'm gonna put, I'm gonna make you a bit nervous. Hopefully, my first one peg. Put you under pressure. Uh -huh. and let's see what happens. There, there you know you how go. like the first time is all right. There you go. Yes. <laughs> the second one. Let's go. Ah, I missed. You must learn from the best. I see. Okay. <laughs> I, I'm, I've learned. <laughs> Well, that didn't go down so well. I guess I'm more of a driver than a thrower, if anything. Now, let's go up to the Lion Park. We're going to enter the danger zone now. Okay. So now you need to stay with me at all times. The tour is a marvelous experience. Not only do you get to learn about these most fearsome and majestic predators, but you get to be in their presence, be up close and personal with them. So this cat here, the Bengal tiger, are the second largest cat in the world. The first largest cat will be a Siberian. Mm -hmm. The Siberian is much larger than this and much more heavier. This cat can get around 350 kilograms. The Siberian, you can push maybe four, 450, which is your biggest. Normally tigers can get twice the size of a lion and run about three times the strength of a lion. Okay, so basically in South Africa, you would say this is the biggest? I would say this is the biggest cat in Africa, yeah. In Africa? In not Africa, just South Africa, not just in South Africa, wow. in Africa. After all that great experience, you get to grab a scrumptious filling meal at any of the open-air restaurants serving African-inspired cuisine. The graffiti on the walls, more than anything, grabbed my attention. It's not just the food that we offer here, it's the whole vibe. It's the interaction with the waiter, it's the interaction with the DJ, it's the interaction with the performers. We end up dancing, it becomes a more of a social with people. It's not ordering a meal, eating and going home, it's an experience. So yeah, that's, that's, that's what makes us so famous. We have a wide selection of different uh, dishes, uh, mainly our signature dishes are our espatada, very nice. Then we do prawns, excellent, and uh, we're uh, famous for our chicken. Okay. We do peri peri chicken, lemon and herb, and it all comes with either potatoes, it can come with salad or with chips. Our prawns are so fresh, they get flown in every day. Um, so we will place the order and two days later it will be flown into the airport, we pick it up at the airport and it arrives fresh on your plate. Yeah. Are you serious? The secret of good prawns is fresh prawns. You can't have frozen all the time. Yeah. A lot of products are frozen, but what we try to do is give you that freshness from the sea. On that note, let's hear what the people visiting Chameleon Village have to say. I learned a lot from today. I've learned team building, um, so many things, and they're so innovative on the structure. And yeah, it was great. Tell me about it. This place is amazing. This place, there's this vibe. Too much is going on. And the sand, man. Tell me about the sand. The vibe, the drinks, the, the entertainment, the friends. Yeah, that's the best, yeah. We are here for the sand. Thank you. Smooth signing out. That certainly looked like a lot of fun. Well, stick with us. We'll be back with more after the break. In the spirit of Easter weekend, Trends Live Asanda Zondi caught up with an award-winning gospel star, Puleng March, over lunch prepared by Chef Makiba Modubi, famously known as the Lazy Chef. With the Easter Sunday coming up, we all want to have a lovely lunch with our friends and family. So the chef shows us how to do this on a budget. Take a look. You're speaking of an Easter weekend celebration. Another thing comes to mind, it's all about gospel, right? And I decided to be joined for this meal by an award-winning gospel artist, Upuleng Maj. Let's go back to when you decided that you're going to be part of a joy celebration, you're going to become a gospel artist. How did it all begin? It started at home. My mom is a pastor, so I'm a PK. So music just started at church, 
at home, at in, in the streets, wherever they see me, they will ask me to sing. So, you know, you started Sunday school because you are a PK. You sing everywhere. Nabo Mama, you are there singing. So the love actually was from there. And then I took it further. 2001, I decided to, I need to pursue this. And I came to Joburg, uh, started as a big backup singer for all the gospel artists, your late Lundis, Fiso Nwane, uh, until I was discovered by U. Linda Lanim Kize, and he asked me to come and join Joya Celebration. That was after I did The Lion King as well. So I joined Joya Celebration for six years. So I understand the good thing, at least in Sevilla in Joya Celebration. So I thought I was ready now to, to do a solo project. What happens to an artist when they decide to go to Okay, I am done with being a group, uh, with this group. Now the decision is to become a solo artist. I don't know about others. Let me tell you about my story. I've always believed that I was called for, for, for the nations. Whether God puts me in a church or when he puts me in a choir or he puts me as a solo artist, but there must be a motion, there must be a move from one point to another. When you are called, you can't stay in one place. So hence I started a church, went as a backup singer to a choir. And when I got there, I always believe that Joya Celebration is actually an institution. It's not like a home laws or kalukuluku can look fellow coin. You understand? You get there, you learn as much as you can. So when that time came, I could just feel it in my heart that you know what? Um I need to go out there. Most pastors' kids, they don't choose the same path as their parents. And you decided, Wuti, I will continue in this way. What my parents started, I will carry on with this legacy. I will carry on with this, um, what, the religion in my family, right? And I'm sure it's something you're instilling in your children. Is it honestly about you and your relationship with the higher power? or is it about you and pleasing your parents? For me, it's the relationship with the higher power. It's the I, I chose God very early in my life. You understand? I was 13 when I came back from school, went into my room, and I just cried to God. I was like, Lord, I understand that my mom is a pastor, but this, I'm choosing it for me. It's difficult for you to speak about spirituality without mentioning your religion. Hey, I think yeah. so. You don't think spirituality can exist on its own? It has nothing to do with what you believe in. For you, there is no way. When you think spirituality, you think God. That's just it. For me, it's just God. It's all I know. He is my higher power. That's, 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 that's all I know and that's all that I want to know. Now for the fun part, after the Easter Sunday service is the special lunch with family and friends. The Lazy Chef put together a nice simple Easter Sunday lunch meal on a budget for us. Let's meet her. How it all began is I used to work at a retail company and then one day my friend came to me at work and basically bullied me to like quit my job and said you're wasting your time, you're a great chef, push this thing full time. And then I literally left my work the next week and then I was like, oh, I'll take a gap year and then I'll be back at this thing. And then I was like, okay, I like cooking. I have a food page. It's for lazy people, the lazy chef. And then the name stuck because I wasn't calling myself that. It was just the page. I'm Machiba, Chef Machiba, the pages, the lazy chef. And then after that, everything just took off. And now people call me lazy full time. To go to a chef school is so expensive in South Africa and sadly most of the time if you take the traditional route of the career you don't get like a return on your investment because you don't get paid that much in the industry so you have to find ways of making money that is not like the traditional industry kind of stuff where you're working in a professional kitchen or you're working at a hotel or a restaurant. So in my case content creation honestly changed my life. Easter eating habits have definitely changed, hey? We no longer just focused on the one traditional way that we are like more accustomed with. We dipping into other cultures, we are dipping into other ways where we don't know we're no longer making the Sunday plate every time it's Easter. You know, you're trying out new salads, you're trying out new ways of making your fish because we realize you can't always fry it. There are other nicer ways of enjoying fish, which is what I'm gonna be showing you guys today. Everywhere I look, everyone is trying to get healthier. And Sunday, seven colors is not that practical. Our economy, everything is expensive. 
first of all everything we are all trying to lose weight we are all trying to become healthier so it's no longer like much of a viable option as much as we love it we must find other ways to enjoy our sunday lunches that isn't always seven colors don't go anywhere there's plenty more coming up after this we thought that we'd visit some of the green innovators and green printers to understand how they are contributing to the green economy. We are creating cosmetic soaps from the byproduct. What we teach you at the college is number one, we teach you how to farm to produce the very food that you're eating. On the moving services side, we used to be very uh, plastic intensive. All our packing materials weren't biodegradable. We actually have these teaching gardens for our children and we introduce them to the gardens so that they know where food comes from. There is opportunity. Now on to a historical gem. Did you know that when the first Dutch farmers arrived in the Kuga and Hamtus region, they had to take their ox wagons upstream, quite a distance to cross the Hamtus River. While after crossing in ferries, while waiting for unfavorable weather conditions to subside, they stayed at the Hamtus Ferry River Hotel. The hotel has since been renovated and is perfect as both a holiday and camping destination. And Trends found out why it's worth a visit. Let's get more. Welcome to the Hamtus Ferry Hotel. Upon arriving, you automatically get a sense of its history from the paintings on the walls. Roy, where does the name of the hotel come from and what's its significance? In the movement of people in the 1700s, from the east to the west, this is where they crossed the river using a ferry that uh, transported them across the river. The ferry hotel evolved from the position of people wanting a place where they could uh, sleep overnight. It was quite an arduous trip to get from uh, to Port Elizabeth to Jeffreys Bay and you almost had to time it with the rain and the flooding and the, and the height of the river and the tides. Why were they relocating? People wanted to start a new life in the colonies, of the British colonies. We also had a large number of German settlers that came out here too after the Crimea War where Britain and Germany fought against Russia. And now, the Hamtus Ferry Hotel prides itself with making minimal architectural changes to the original structure. This to keep its authenticity and retain the building's historical appearance. We had the, historic, uh, the historical buildings became unusable eventually and Hanno van Dijk redesigned this area. What can visitors look forward to when they're here? The big thing is the historical relaxation that you find. We had, it's the most amazing site for a wedding venue. We've got lawn sloping down onto the river. We have a little marriage chapel there. It has a wonderful ambience for weddings, for corporate events, for birthday parties. So this is basically our honeymoon suite. Oh. This is our luxury room right over here for those romantic times and honeymoon sweeters that would like to come through. As you can see, we've obviously tried to keep the, the warmth of the hotel into the rooms with its antiqueness throughout the hotel itself. A stone throw away is a caravan park. Believe it or not, some of these campers come here for months. It's a beautiful sunny day and I am chilling with Marius who happens to be very big on camping. You've been here for a whole month already. Why is this the perfect destination for you to come camping? This is the first time that we get a running here at the Ferry Hotel. It's situated in a nice place. It's not far from Jeffrey's Bay. If you don't want to make food, you go to the hotel and have a hamburger and a beer and etc. So what sort of things do you bring along with you when you go camping? Well, I think you must have all the basics to enjoy it. It's like, well, fire is number one for me. I call that the bush TV. Lovely. No stress. And uh, just 
chilling out. We've been doing it for four years now and it's absolutely wonderful. I don't think I want to give it up now. I'm not ready to go into a house yet. When I got grown up and we started camping here and my husband used to have a boat, I said to him, I didn't realize it's such a beautiful place. And it's a heritage from Fort Elizabeth, Gekebecha now. And um, that's how it's close to my heart because it still reminds me of my mom and dad and their uh, friends coming to dance here. At this hotel, it's the river here, the Gampus River. Um, beautiful uh, sunsets in the evenings, fishing, lots and lots of fish we caught here, especially uh, when it's uh, like on a December holiday, it's so full of the crowd here and the atmosphere is very nice and everybody's got a boat. Why is this an amazing quality of life for you? Health-wise, your mind, you're not cramped up in a, in a, in a building four walls. You can move out, you can go for walks. When these guys don't feel like starting a braai, there's always some good signature meals back at the hotel. The fish, all right, um, grilled or fried, deep fried, and then with chip salad or onion rings. Um, the second will be your, the ferryman's beef burger. It's made also from, at, from local um, butchery, we purchase the mince and we make our own patties as well. We're going to have the calamari. What makes your food special? It's all the flavours that we put in, microgreens. Um, we're also aiming to do our own um, herb garden, you know, pick freshly from the garden. Everything is on the premises. And yeah, we concentrate on everybody's taste. And the cuisine is palatable indeed, with the fish fresh from the river. It's at this historical monument that serenity and tranquility lie.
week here at Trends Live are enjoying the best gospel acts in Mzansi. This week we have Winterfeld born faith based musician Michael Begumozi Masia, better known as Beggy M. The multi award winner relentlessly uses his amazing talents to serve the ministry in many ways. Welcome to Trends Live, Beggy M. How are you? I'm super califragilisticexpialidocious. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, wow. I love that. I love this. Now, your music journey began all the way back in 1992. Tell us how did that come about? Uh, actually, I think I started singing at an early age while I was still six, and uh, my parents noticed that gift as I was growing up. And then go growing up, I had, was introduced to choral music at a primary and high school, mm -hmm. ended up doing choral music in a, at a professional level, then later joined this genre of gospel music. Oh, I love that. And how did you use different avenues of ministry to grow yourself and your brand? Partnership helps a lot because there are mm. people who are ahead of us and once you give yourself time, you, there's a saying that says if you are the, in the presence of the great people, just sit and learn and you will see mighty things happening in your life. Mm, I love that. And I know that you're also a minister of the word of God. What are some of the projects that you're involved in? Yeah, I'm also uh, working together with uh, uh, Kingdom Revival to do outreaches and also as Best in Praise as the uh, organization that I founded together with my wife, mm -hmm. Annelisa. And we are just, uh, our heart is, is into winning souls and helping, making sure that we make a difference in the lives of other people. Absolutely. And speaking about winning souls, when did you discover this calling upon your life? I got saved when I was 12, and uh, that was long ago. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and uh, I realized that I had the passion of speaking to people, seeing people uh, uh, winning in life. And I realized mm -hmm. that the line that I was using, it was actually winning souls for them to be better people at the end of the day. Absolutely. And I can imagine that like being in ministry as well as being in the music industry is not easy. How do you navigate and keep a good balance between the two? It, it, for me, it's passion. It's a, it's a calling. It, 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 for me, you don't. It, it's not. It, it's not toiling. Mm -hmm. I'm just enjoying everything. Mm -hmm. uh, I just need to align it. Since I'm a family man, also try to see, and also it helps to serve. If you and your partner are both serving, it makes things easier. Even the planning much better. Yeah. Okay. And we have the Easter weekend approaching soon. Speaking about family time, I'm sure you're going to be spending time with your family. But is the person using those abusants? Well, I'll be traveling. Uh, we have an, an outreach that we are planning at uh, somewhere in Cosmos City mm -hmm. together with the city of Zion and whereby we'll be helping um, uh, kids that are disadvantaged, giving them gifts, sharing the love that we have together with them, seeing that what is it that we can do going forward to help them uh, as, as they are growing up. And also I'll be traveling to uh, Mabopani, Pretoria, and also other provinces where I'll be ministering in song as, uh, as Beggy M, the artist, yes. Okay, so you're also into charity work. Yes, I yes, love that, I yes. love that. And your first album, which was released in 2009, is called Let's talk about that one. What was it all about? Umbusoza, I was just, I was becoming, I was just an herald to tell people that there is this kingdom. When somebody receives that kingdom, things are going to be fine in life. The Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So we are, I'm, I'm, I'm becoming an herald to say, guys, there is life in Christ and a better life that one needs to to experience and succeed in life. I love that. Amen. Amen. And amen. <laughs> so your latest album is called My Weapon. My Weapon. And I know that it came directly after the pandemic period. Yes, yes. What yes. was the creative process like for you in forming that? Uh, for me, the inspiration, let me start with the inspiration. Yeah. Uh, you know, when the year starts, you, you, you find yourself uh, speaking positive things, prophesying, mm -hmm. declaring. What is it that you want to see on your year happening? But to me, yes, I declared positive things. But to my surprise, uh, we got a message that my wife had cancer. So it just caught me uh, offside. But one sure. thing that I've learned is uh, 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 it's good to have people who, who will support you around you. And I've, one thing I've learned is that a child of God cannot be stranded. You are someone who used to encourage people when they go through such, who pray for people, who receive healing. Yeah. But now it's, it's hitting home. Yeah. So now I had to learn 
through praise to lift myself up. I had to learn a mantra that says a, um, a child of God cannot be stranded. Mm -hmm. I had to learn it and I was so fortunate and blessed to have people who won't say to me, uh, to remind me that my wife is, is about to die, but will say she shall live and mm -hmm. witness the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. I had to see that and through that, we managed to raise and, and the album, My Weapon, became the praise. The mm. praise album became my weapon and I managed to come out successful, victorious, and today she's cancer free. Woo! Woo! I think that deserves a round of Amen. applause. Amen. Wow! Amen. I'm Amen. so happy to hear that she's cancer free. Amen. And that, you know, the journey was through my weapon for her to get there. Amen. That's Amen. amazing. What is next for Peggy M? Um, now I'm, I'm, I'm pushing collaborations. Um, I cannot announce now the names, but there are people that have already started speaking to big names. Yes, in the gospel industry. So soon you will be hearing collaborations. So I'll, I'll be pushing collaborations 2024, 2025. Okay. Then 2026, we'll be doing my big life pro project. Why don't you want to spill the beans? <laughs> huh? We want to know. We want... No, no, no. I think it's safe like that. Okay, can you at least show us what, what you can do on the stage, right? We cannot wait to see what you're about to do. You are inspirational, you're phenomenal, and you're a great vocalist. So take it away. Thank you. <laughs> And that's how we wrap up the show on this Good Friday with the sounds of Beggy M. We'll be back next week, same time, same place. Have a lovely Easter weekend. Good night. Just so